Yellowstone is located at the northeastern tip of the Snake River Plain, a flat, striking corridor that cuts through the mountainous region. The scar is caused by a hot spot in the Earth's mantle the geological equivalent of a gas burner on a stove that was slowly displaced by the North American tectonic plate, triggering a series of massive northeast trending volcanic eruptions over the past 17 million years. The most recent super eruption occurred 640,000 years ago, spewing enough lava to build several Mount Rainiers. The explosion emptied a huge underground chamber, which then collapsed and caused the landscape to plummet into an oval-shaped caldera, the size of Rhode Island and surrounded by faults. A magma chamber still lies beneath Yellowstone, a remnant of that massive eruption. It is estimated that there are 10,000 cubic kilometers of magma in it. But the chamber is only 15 to 20 percent liquid, so it is too thick to erupt anytime soon. Although magma underlies most of the park, it is closest to the surface, within 5 kilometers, beneath the north shore of Yellowstone Lake. With magma temperatures above 800 degrees Celsius, the heat flowing through the ground is very high. The amount is 100 times the average of the Earth's surface. In the National Park, Rainwater and snowmelt that seep into the interior is heated to more than 250 degrees Celsius but remains liquid because the enormous pressure underground prevents the water from expanding into steam. The hot liquid, mixed with carbon dioxide and foul-smelling hydrogen sulfide gas, gushes back through cracks in the surrounding rock dissolving sodium, silica, chloride, arsenic and other minerals and eventually reaches the surface where it feeds thousands of hot springs and bubbles. The bubble, mud pots that make up Yellowstone. And although scientists have been studying Yellowstone's hydrothermal system since the 1870s, it wasn't until 1966 that people began to realize that it could produce such terrible explosions. That summer, Patrick Muffler, then a young scientist at the USGS, stepped into Pocket Basin for the first time, near the western edge of the Yellowstone. He was there to map hydrothermal systems for NASA, which wanted to understand volcanic landscapes that might be discovered on future missions to Mars. These vast, drooping grasslands are filled with bubbling hot springs and fill the air with the faint smell of hydrochloric acid. This basin is surrounded on three sides by low ridges dotted with several spindly trees. As Muffler and his supervisor, Donald White, explored the landscape, White quickly recognized something familiar. White was one of only a handful of people worldwide studying hydrothermal systems at the time. In 1951, he visited the small town of Lake City, California, five nights after a strange natural disaster occurred there. An inconspicuous collection of hot springs, which feed the lush, marshy elephant grasslands, had exploded, throwing 300,000 tons of mud and rock into the surrounding fields. Most of the rock is a mixture of gravel and sand, cemented with white zeolite and opal minerals. White knew that these materials formed when mineral-saturated hydrothermal water reached a cooler surface and its dissolved substances crystallized. He concluded that the explosion was a hydrothermal explosion triggered by underground water turning into steam. As White and Muffler walked up the ridge surrounding Pocket Basin, their boots crunched on similar rocks. White theorized that this basin was a hydrothermal explosion crater much larger than the one at Lake City roughly the size of Yankee Stadium. The ridge is a pile of rubble thrown out of a hole.
But these explosions were not triggered by a sudden injection of volcanic heat from below, according to White and Muffler. Instead, they suspect it is caused by environmental changes on the surface. The blast debris sits directly on top of the rocks and gravel left behind when the glaciers on the Pinedale Ice Shelf retreated at the end of the last ice age, about 13,500 years ago. Even if there were glaciers, hot springs would melt the ice above them, creating ice-dammed lakes, said Muffler, who retired in 2001 but still works with the USGS. The weight of the lake will put pressure on the hot springs below, preventing the water from boiling even if the temperature is over 100 degrees Celsius. Muffler and White speculate that as the glacier retreated, the ice dam broke and the lake's water level plummeted. 